I'll sign in. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, feel free to follow along with your microphone muted or unmuted, whatever you prefer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, Dave. Okay, so next on our agenda, we have got invocation or motivational phrase. Who would like to volunteer today to do either one? Dave, go for it. Look, no what? one in this world is perfect. Just remember, every derriere has a crack in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> that sounds like words of wisdom if I ever heard it. Right? <laughs> All right. So our speaker today is going to be Chester Freeman. Chester, welcome. I'm going to let you take the floor in, in just a little bit. Um, looks like we've also got Pat with us today. And Pat, are you from the Redmond Washington Club? Yes. Pleasure to be here. I am from in Washington Club. There were supposed to be several of us joining, but I don't see anybody else. So I'm going to look like today. At least not yet. <laughs> well, we welcome. I have a tendency for people to chime in to try to sign on late. So, mm -hmm. okay. well, we are in the same time zone. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goodness. Okay. All right. I don't see any other visitors today. So announcements, we've got an announcement for us today. Uh, Roland. Well, I want to add something to uh, the introduction of Pat Bache, um, um, and particularly to Carl Vertry's attention. Um, following up with that uh, interclub we had with Redmond, Pat asked for uh, more information on our scholarship program. So I connected with Carl Vertries and he sent me uh, yeah. information that I forwarded oh, to Pat. Like so now, Pat, you know that where the information came from. So if there's any problem with it, it's Carl's fault. <laughs> oh, it's your choice. No, uh, and we appreciate it. That we appreciate it. We are using that. We are in the process of trying to implement for the first time a scholarship program. We know that we won't have it ready for this school year. Yeah. Getting the, the next school year. Yeah. Well, feel free to ask myself or Carl any any questions as you work on it. We'll do that. Appreciate your help. <clears throat> All right, Earl, I believe I saw your hand. Uh, two announcements. What well, uh, Dave? Uh, <clears throat> Dave and I yeah, yesterday, but I've yeah, got to jump uh, on to uh, Kiwanis here. Good stuffs. Uh, that you have. Maybe you call back after. One of those blue bags yeah. for me. I'll be glad to. Uh, uh, take that from you at the end of May so we can take it over to the uh, uh, St. Vincent de Paul in the, in the food bank. The second item is uh, if any of you would like to run for an office, uh, I, I have forwarded to Rachel a list that, and uh, uh, we are always looking for people to be added on it. And so before the uh, final deadline, uh, which she will tell us at some point in time, uh, let us know. We'd glad to have more people running for office. Thank you. Thank you, Earl. And that includes the position of Lieutenant Governor. We are looking for a new Lieutenant Governor. No previous experience required. So if you are interested, please let me know or uh, Steve Emhoff, who is our current Lieutenant Governor. Okay, anybody else? I've got more. Gary. Yes, the fire department is looking for a budget committee member you can apply through the redmond fire that's oregon redmond fire website and we meet maybe two maybe three times a year so if you're interested want to learn how we spend your tax money sign up okay. all right so birthdays this week i've got 
Judy Patrick was yesterday. So Mike, wish Judy a happy birthday for us, please. <laughs> and then um, today is Anna Elisa Duarden. Um, I probably mispronounced that last name, I apologize. All right, any other announcements? No, all right, I'll keep going. Uh, just make sure you're checking out the calendar of events section on our newsletter so you can stay up to date on upcoming uh, events and service opportunities. We've got some coming up here. I think our next one is in a couple weeks. So um, also, if you haven't already, please be sure to fill out the diversity and inclusion survey that was emailed up by Kiwanis International. I'm not sure if that has an expiration date on it, but if you haven't done it and you still need to, please at least give it a try. Um, the other one is the survey for the um, district convention. So DECON 2021, they're looking for feedback on that as well. So, all right. One last opportunity, any more announcements? Nope, okay. All right, so happy dollars. Who's happy today? <clears throat> Rachel, I got some. Did, she, did we freeze? Chris, I'd go ahead, I think. Okay, so, I think everyone yeah. froze. I broke the internet. Um, uh, I'm happy to announce that Reagan Elizabeth came uh, April 1st. I have an April Fool's daughter uh, at 5.57 a.m. And everyone is happy and healthy. So we're really excited about that. Sorry I haven't been around the last couple of weeks just trying to manage all the, you know, two kids and now another one. So I've got 20 happy dollars for that. And getting my first shot and not freezing to death uh, in line this morning outside. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yes, thank you all. Roland. I'll put in $5. I uh, want to welcome Pat from the other Redmond Club. Nice to see you. And say hi to uh, the others that didn't make it. And um, I guess uh, go Ducks uh, baseball team, huh? No, Mike. Okay. And uh, just uh, nice to see you. Nice to have nice weather day after day. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Welcome, Linda. Good to see you. Hello. Good to be here. All right, Earl. I saw your hand. Well, I'm just I'm happy that. Uh, like Roland, that this, we have some nice weather, and I'm glad the wind is blowing, so it takes care of all the pollution in the air, and it seems like it must be sending it a long ways away because it is a blowing. How much, Ro uh, Earl? Two. All right, last call. Anybody else happy today? No. Nope? Okay. All right, so your joke today comes from actually my coworker's two-year-old granddaughter. And she told me I have to say it in her granddaughter's voice, which I'm not gonna do. You're just gonna have to use your imagination. But um, so why did the elephant cross the road? Get to the other side. It's to get to his house. So why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. To get to his house. <laughs> so she's two. This little one, she's two years old and she's telling jokes. So I thought it was pretty funny. But yeah, the answer is always to get to his house. <laughs> all right, Chester, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. So thanks for having me, everybody. I just go through this as quick as possible because there's a ton of stuff that's happened with Camp Eagle Cap. Um, first off this year, last year we had to do three day camps, three 15 hour days in the mountains here locally. Those kids are coming back this year to the real camp and everything is set in place to go forward. The cabins at one 
7,500 feet in the mountains that are 130 years old, the 108 horse trips, and all the logistics have come together really well. I met with five campers and their guardians or foster parents last week, and everything's in line. It's a blessing. That's awesome. Then we are having a golf tournament, the first annual Camp Eagle Cap Golf Classic on the first and second. And I don't need to say much more because it's filled up already, 36 teams and paid for. All sponsors, well, any sponsors that have donated already. Um, that's done. All the logistics and COVID restrictions are in place. So that's really cool. We are looking for anybody that wants to help out with silent auction items or prizes for that tournament, um, which we would put your name on the paper in front of it and describe that. Um, Liz, who gave up her 10-year career with North Face to come be the director of Camp Eagle Cap, is orchestrating that at the Man Mortgage Office here. And she says, if we could get three Yetis, that would be really cool. But I told her I would say that. <laughs> um, then last but not least, um, I started Just Save One, meaning one child last year, to hold the assets and the orchestration of ongoing stuff for Camp Eagle Cap with the number one focus to make sure camp is going to happen, whether I'm around or not. And we were blessed with a beautiful 235 acre parcel in the Wallow Valley last November. We were given the first conditional use permit for a guest ranch and lodge in the Wallow Valley that's ever been allowed. All of the preliminary stuff is paid. The property is paid off. The site work is paid for, and it starts this month. After that, it's a $1.5 million project to build the lodge and the logistics, et cetera. And this is what's really cool is that guest lodge, since conditional use permits in place, will allow us not only to use that when we're not high in the mountains the day before and the day two days after each camp, but it will allow us to do reunions each year for past campers in the foster care system or raised by a single parent or grandparent. And we could float the Minam River, two day float trip, go back to the lodge, have a safe place remotely where these kids thrive the best. Um, and then also it allows us to lease it out to other local ministries and nonprofits, which is in the bylaws, anybody in Central Oregon helping children. So that was a lot of stuff, but I think I did pretty good on time. Any questions? Earl? How many kids uh, are you going to be uh, experiencing this year, do you think? There'll be, we never, so the camp itself is set up to be more of a family camping trip, obviously extreme when we seven miles into the wilderness, but 10 per camp, we'll do at least two this summer and we'll start the reunion process hopefully next year, which could be up to six weeks and if, when it builds to that. There we've, over the last eight years, impacted over a hundred of these children we already have these kids coming back. At, if they do the best they can through middle school, stay out of trouble and don't get into the mess that's in middle school this, these days, they come back as junior mentors when they're 15. And we already have a lot of these kids coming back and their lives have changed. I'm going to get choked up. But um, it, it's a true blessing because these kids have been through things you don't want to hear about. Uh, could you tell us a little more about the kind of kids you work with? Uh, we have a visitor here from Redmond, uh, Washington, and they might be interested in, in hearing what you, what you do. Okay. So it's set up for fourth and fifth graders as the main focus before they go into middle school. Each one of these kids has lost one parent or both parents to drugs, suicide, prison, physical or sexual abuse. The worst things imaginable. They're raised by a single parent, a grandparent, aunt, uncle, or they're in the foster care system. This is a faith-based organization, but DHS has signed off on the fact that once the CASA worker explains that to the foster parent, or we explain that to the guardian before the kid knows about camp, because we don't want them to get excited if things don't work out, then 
they've released that. They know it. It's not a big preaching camp. It's a family camping trip that these kids have never been on. Thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. Yes, Dave. Uh, since you're going out in the wilderness, like you say, uh, what kind of medical facilities do you have on these trips? So we have the backup, I think he's the backup fire chief, but and we have paramedics and nurses, we have ties to Life Flight, and we have a connection directly with the Enterprise Hospital and a nurse down below. Um, so all those parameters, obviously there's things that can happen, but we have all the medical supplies up there, the paramedic that oversees this, and he's the one that does all the recruiting for any paramedics or nurses that come to camp. Thank you. Um, question, um, where these kids come from uh, basically Oregon or maybe even Idaho, um, do they come from big cities or just about anywhere? No, only Central Oregon. Lapine, oh. the Madras, to Prime Build as Sisters. In fact, we have kids from almost every one of those locations this year. And it could handle a lot more than 20. I know you don't want to hear that, but there's a lot in this particular situation. And there, that's just fourth and fifth grade. That's why my hope is the expansion and the dream that's to come. It's obviously a blessing. It's way more than I imagined, but it's all come together. And I truly believe all that's going to happen here in the next year and a half. Hi, you, you mentioned a very old uh, camp. I, what, 120 years old, something like that? 130 year old. 130 year old camp. Uh, what about maintenance? I, I know that there are people in this, in this organization who do that kind of work uh, mm -hmm. and have done so recently. So I just wondered if it was something you'd like to, to have us consider working on uh, for you. So the, it's called the Halton Camp. It was bought in 1956 by Ted Halton, Halter Tractor Company um, from Charlie. Charlie was 17 years old in 1890 and he had tuberculosis and he went into the mountains and he told his parents that he was going to die up there. He built those cabins. He hand milled them up there. They're in strong structural shape because mm -hmm. Dennis oversees the camp for the Haltons. They usually get groups to come up and help make sure all the structure and the integrity of those cabins are in place. Obviously uh -huh. they're old, but Things were built a little stronger, no offense, so back in the days, and especially at 7,500 feet. But yeah, there's always opportunity to help. Um, Chuck Holiday is a good friend of mine. We go way back in the wrestling community, and he is trying to get the schools here locally to build the bunk beds and the beds for the lodge. Um, he also contacted Eastern Oregon State wrestling teams, the girls and boys teams. They're going to come help build the 1,500 foot fence. Um, wow. A local excavation company, the son of that company, has been a mentor at this camp three years. He's going up to help build the road in. We're going in on the 21st of May. Um, Rob Bob Buckner does wells here in Central Oregon. He's going up to do the well. So. There's a ton of opportunity. Um, this, I don't know how, uh, well, it's not 1.5 million anymore because the land was blessed to us, but it's gonna be a million dollar project. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir, could you talk about your upcoming fundraiser again one more time? We had some people sign on late and I wanna make sure everybody got the info. Okay, so the camp first annual Camp Eagle Cap Golf Classic. It's a true handicap competitive uh, two-day tournament. Um, it's actually filled up yesterday. All the people will have paid by the end of the day today. We have a number of sponsors in, title sponsors for a thousand. We have one sponsor left for the food. A lady is a caterer here in Redmond is doing lunches and breakfasts both days and 
we just have to come up with $500 to cover her a little bit of her $2,200 cost. And then we're looking for silent auction items or prizes for the tournaments where we'll put on a sheet in front of each one of those prizes, who it came from and who's sporting this camp. We're actually Liz, again, I'll tell you, or I'll get in trouble. Again, she gave up a 10 year history with North Face to come to do this the rest of her life. She said, we really could get three Yetis. Those would be really cool prizes to show the winning team. So something like that or anything else would be a blessing. Okay. All right. Any other fundraisers on the horizon or is that just the focus for now? That's the focus for now. We do. We used to do bingo nights and Wild Ride has teamed up with us to be able to do that. But under the circumstances we're under, that's not in play. Um, we've done other silent auction and bingo night bigger ones at 7th Street. Um, but again, those things are kind of on hold. The golf tournament worked out really well. And with the restrictions, we have all the guidelines to make sure it goes well and safe. Okay. Chester, would you um, tell the club about your guys' quarterly giving back program? I think that's oh, yeah. very impactful and that's all, yeah. Okay, so I, I own Man Mortgage for Central Oregon. I don't usually talk about that. Even with customers, I'm talking about camp more than I am this. But um, I started Your Vote Matters seven years ago. So because I can't be on every board and I've got some primary focuses if I didn't just mention those. Um, I started Your Vote Matters and the nonprofits in each community. Right now, Primeville, Madras, and Redmond, and I just expanded into Bend. I have two, two three loan officers working over there in Lapine. Each area does the votes and the nonprofit that gets the most votes, we don't ask for your information, we don't market you. Those get the proceeds that I set aside from every loan we do. Just last quarter, we gave nearly $2,000 to two nonprofits in Redmond. We gave over $2,000 to two nonprofits. One was the Band of Brothers, one was Quilts of Valor in Primeville, and so on in the other communities. In the last three years, now it's exceeded $75,000 I've given back to local nonprofits. I could have put that towards camp, but I, I love being a part of more than just what I'm doing. So does that cover it? <laughs> Not so much a question, but I really want to thank you for all the work that, that you put in to help the kids in our communities. And it's really important stuff. So we really appreciate what you've done. I appreciate it. Mm. I'll end on one story. Two years ago, two little girls, 10 years old, were riding in the van. Now we have a really cool bus that Highland Baptist Church sold us for a low price. But those two little girls were talking about specifically how they were going to commit suicide. <laughs> and by the end of the camp, we came down from the mountain. We were all singing songs. They raised their hand and they wanted to tell us their story, even though I don't ask them to ever. They told the specifics of what happened to them. And then they looked at all of us and they said, the reason we're telling you this is because you guys truly care about us. And now we're just going to help people and help horses, <laughs> which was really cool. That's why you do stuff like this for those moments. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Chester, we would love to have you be a part of our club. So um, if there's any interest at all, please let one of us know. And I know you're going to get some follow-up information and uh, we'd love to include an application in there for you. If you would, we would welcome you to fill it out and join us. Yeah. And there's people, strong individuals that work with me in the man office that their part is outside of going to camp because they can't handle the stories and they don't want to, but they hear them anyways through my third party stuff. So there's definitely me and maybe somebody else that would be able to do more but I could definitely sit in and see what's going on and help where I could. Absolutely, we, we meet once a week right now, virtually, obviously. Um, we're really looking forward to getting back to those in-person meetings. Um, and then we have all kinds of um, like service projects and um, 
different things that we, you know, different ways we give back to the community. So we would love to have you guys involved in that with us. Yep, definitely. I've watched Kiwanis a long time. I've been a part of a lot of stuff, but I had to narrow down my focus. So. Sure. Yeah, totally understand. All right. Does anybody have any final questions before we end for the day? All right. I don't see any. So that's all I have. Thank you again, Chester. We really appreciate your time coming and presenting to us today. And thank you for all that you do for our community. It makes a big impact. Yeah, thank you. And if you guys have any ideas on prizes and silent auction, that would be cool. All right. Okay. All right. Well, have a fantastic day, everyone. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks. Bye. Everybody. Thank you.